First of all, I'm, I just can't believe the amount of people that showed up. When you've got the police and valet, <laughs> I was like, is this the right place? What the hell, man? Uh, no, I'm, I'm very excited. I actually been talking to Taylor since last year, and I was hoping to do something with them, somehow to support the city, our, our fair city, but really just the film community at large. But I had a couple of uh, personal things happen, so I couldn't do it. And I called her up, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? And then, um, then it turned into this. <laughs> I was, I was going to be sitting in one of those chairs with you guys. I was, I was going to be part of the mixer. And, I, and then Taylor was so sweet and said, why don't, you, why don't you come in and talk? I said, you don't want an actor up here talking. <laughs> you know, pontificate, you know. Not without a script. Not without a script. I said, but what about, I said, but my agent. I'm not who I am without my agent. And I don't say that in a trite, stereotypical way because I think what, the reason we're actually here, and Liz, you're so awesome for yeah, saying this. Really. When you said this, you, you know how many times we've been on a set where people go, are you from L.A.? Yeah. And you go, no, I'm actually, I live here. And they're like, oh, <laughs> as though that's weird, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's insulting. It's insulting. I and mean, we've been going through that through, through years, right? Yeah. So you hit the nail on the head, Liz. And Liz is an exceptional producer. Exceptional, but there's so many people here that have so much talent. And by the way, it, we, we can have all the incentives we want, but if you don't have a talent pool to support that, you're screwed. You let them run away too. But if you are talent, you have to sh show up. Here's the thing, blood, sweat, and tears cannot be replaced. Right. We've all bled, cried, right? We've all, we've all done that. Um, there are people out, we've been, and we're going to get going here, but there are people I invited here that I want you to meet. They're sitting among you. Extraordinary. They're documentary filmmakers. Roy Machado for Dallas Audio Post. This man built this huge company. We just, big film at South by Southwest that he, he's been doing this kind of work forever. We are Fort Worth. This is a special city, but we're part of a film community. I... And I don't mind saying I'm, I'm from Fort Worth, but I never say I'm a local actor. You know why? Because I, I don't want people to perceive us any other way. Right. I'm a Fort Worthian, yes, hell yes. But I'm a part of, a, I'm a part of the film community. I couldn't do that without my, without my agent. And we've been together 33, 33 years. 33 years. I don't know of any other place where you can do that. Now, having said that, I can't be here today without having kicked and screamed and cried because this woman here made me level up from the moment I walked into her office. I am not where I am today had she not empowered me. And the thing about it is we today, we walk on a set today, you can't walk in just feeling grateful. That doesn't get the job done. You're there to execute, to, to, to deliver the goods and they don't have time to teach you about anything. And I can begin to tell you stories, and we're going to get into that as quick as we can because we're limited, but, it, but it, hopefully we're not going to be pushed out of here too fast. <laughs> because I, I, we, we're here to dispel all those myths, right. okay? There is a space for everybody in this business. Everybody, okay? Everybody, when you walk on a set, people have answers. Yes, they, they've, they've mapped out a plan, right, Mary? Mm -hmm. yeah. But they don't, they don't know the whole thing. They don't know how the whole day is going to turn out. You have to show up and, 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 and cooperate, collaborate. That is your responsibility, which means don't be nervous. Everybody's freaking nervous on the set. <laughs> Everybody, right? Nobody, can, nobody wants to tell you that. But if you are smart enough and you go, no, I think, that, I think this line needs to be changed, or I'm like, that doesn't make sense. This line screws up the beat for the next thing. You know, you got to speak up. you got to engage. When they see you do that, they know you're a solution person too. And if you're likable and respectful and you, you treat people kindly, that's important too. So there's a big arc of stuff that goes on to being an actor. Now I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> but Mary has taught me that. She's, she's adapted over the years. And I'm gonna let you take over, but the thing is that- Is this working? Hello? Yes, okay, sorry Mary. So you I see get why off he's the best? You see I had to get that off my chin. Um, Thank you first to, to Jessica and Taylor for having me here. And this is fantastic. And to the whole film commission. And Liz, you're now my publicist. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, I knew you were a good actress, but that's amazing. Um, but really, thank you. Um, I was uh, asked a very simple question before coming here, and it was, why Fort Worth? 
And it's a great question, but I didn't even hesitate to go, why not Fort Worth? It's not even up for debate anymore. Why not Dallas? Why not Marfa? Why not San Antonio? Do you think so that uh, Joanne and Chip Gaines said, why Waco? And certainly Taylor did not say, why Fort Worth? So I will share with you, if you will not hold it against me, that I am, although I am a very proud fourth generation Fort Worth native, I do live in Dallas. <laughs> right? Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deflect this. I was prepared. I have a shirt from the railhead that I wear proudly that says, life's too short to live in Dallas. <laughs> and I did go to SMU, but I'm a huge Frogs fan, and both brothers went there. So the, very quickly, the backstory on me is that I went to college in Dallas. I wanted to come home to work. I wanted to, I had an advertising and PR degree and I wanted to be in marketing. And at that time, and this is in the 80s, there wasn't really much of an industry here in that area. Dallas was booming. It was the, the big 80s in Dallas. There was so much going on that I got this incredible job in advertising. And like we all have, worked my way up from a secretary to a coordinator, to the casting director, to do produce national TV and film commercials but I found out I had an affinity for actors. In fact, they used to accuse me in castings, whose side are you on? And I went, I think I'm on their side. <laughs> so I worked for a couple of Dallas agents, misled, thinking, okay, this is the big time, this is Hollywood. And it wasn't because at that time, most of the agents were modeling agencies who had acting divisions. And I could tell from my experience, having worked with actors on both coasts, that this is not how an agent should be. This is not how actors should be represented. So I took, leveraged what little experience I'd had at that time, and the contacts, which is the most important thing we all know in this industry, the contacts and the relationships I had built in production and casting and opened up my own agency to represent people like this. And I have repped him since he was 19. So um, we've come, we've come a, <laughs> We've come a she long still looks the same. Uh, yeah, no, no. But the point is that it is so important to build these industry relationships, and it doesn't matter if it's Dallas or Fort Worth or anywhere. The one thing Julio and I have always had in common from day one is we are not local. I've, I've actually almost fired someone for saying that. Um, we are not local. There's a process to this. And any one of you, any one of us can do this. We've both had opportunities not only to work in L.A., but to live in L.A. I turned down someone trying to buy my agency years ago, and I turned down going to work out there because the quality of life in this market is so much better than anything, that we value that, and that we have proven that you just can't think local. You can do anything, and we have. Now, Red did such a great job talking about incentives. I could tell you a quick history of them and why we have them, because in the 80s when I started, one of the first films I booked was Places in the Heart, Trip to Bountiful, um, Terms of Endearment, Tender Mercies, all Academy Award winning films. This was going on in Texas. Then we got into, well, Dallas was here, and of course that put us all on, on the map. Then we got into the Walker, Texas Ranger, or as everybody says, Walker Ranger, Texas Walker Ranger, no one can ever get it right. <laughs> but we got into that, and then we got into the, and I'm really gonna date myself here, we got into the movies of the week. Intent to kill, urge to kill, power to kill. Some, <laughs> small, like killing in a small town. We had uh, middle, Middleman's Hardware in yes, Denton, it, Texas, Ryan Polly. Yeah. So we went through that phase. And everything is just cooking, and all of a sudden, you know, the wheels start to come off the bus, and the work goes to Canada. And that's when, at that time, everything was regional. There were sort of regional boundaries, and even though Julio and I never respected them, it was harder to get over them and around them, but we did it. You can't let them, pardon the pun, fence you in. But when the incentives started, they started because the states had to be competitive to get the work back from Canada. LA's out there trying to figure out how to get it back, but all the states are smart, and they're like, okay, we've got to do this. So we have kind of lived and died by the incentives, but we can't let them control us. Like they were saying, there are other, we've done a lot of this work without them but they are so important, so please. I'm working, I'm not on the board, but I am working with the talent representative, Trish Avery, to try to get the attention of the representatives and explain to them that they do not want these people moving out of state. Film incentives are based on citizens of that state, 
And people are, I mean, I get calls, you wouldn't believe, of people wanting to come here just so they can be in a Taylor Sheridan project. They don't live here. I'm like, no, 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 you're not, you're not a Texan. You, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's happening everywhere, and you do have to be careful. So there's just been this evolution of the film business, and it's been a very tough time. But we, and not just Julio, I represent some of the most amazing people. I am so fortunate um, to try to get these guys the quality work, these girls that they deserve, that they've worked their lives for. I get, I get tickled when people say to me, I'd like to be an actor. <laughs> of course, my mind, I'm like, who wouldn't? <laughs> but I don't say that. But what I say is, what is your experience? What have you done? What training have you done? What, have you, what relationships have you built? What, what are you doing every day to establish yourself, to train yourself, to become competitive? And it, be, it, it helps all of us. And I mean, we do tend to have sort of a mutual admiration society. We've worked very hard to get to this point. Well, we're working on two fronts because on, on, on one end, you know, we have Mary holding the bar high. You know, this is a person who set the base rate for actors who were non-union so they could get paid a decent, you know, rate so they can stay in the business. Well, you know, I can't speak for the other agencies. I don't know what they were doing, but I know they weren't doing what Mary was doing. And so you can't, you know, the reason you're actors and the reason you get paid what you get paid is so that you can don't go on to the next job. You don't want that to continue to diminish, then the talent pool starts to degrade. So Mary handles, you know, the whole section of upholding the, the film business through, through contracts, talent, advocacy, whatever. It's all of that. But on my end, on my end is to hold the line as the artist. And it's not just being the actor, right? Like, like I can't, I, I don't, how many, I don't, I don't know how many people here are actors. No, I know there's a lot of people in production. Um, I have a lot of friends here who, who, who are in the film business. But we don't wait, I don't want to wait for the phone to ring. I can't, I can't put my whole livelihood on my agent. That's not the relationship we agreed to. Even though she never said, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna call you and always bring you good news. No, I mean, I, I have to do my part. But the problem is, then how do you do that? And you gotta be savvy. You have to be savvy. What does that mean? It, goes, it means go back to being who you are because you're uniquely yourself. You're the product. I hate saying that. It's true. But it's true. You know, they always say, uh, don't, you know, be yourself, everybody else is taken. <laughs> That's kinda true. You know, and so, and I'm gonna throw out stories because it's the best way to mm -hmm. make that happen. So, I love Taylor Sheridan. I love the guy. He's kind of like the new Tommy Lee Jones, yes, he right? Is. Yes, he, is. he might be nicer, but no, Tommy Lee Jones <laughs> is amazing. I've worked with Tommy Lee Jones, so I can say that. He wasn't nice to me. Uh, oh, he wasn't he nice, was to nice to you. But here's the thing T Taylor Sheridan is a part of our community. But it's not fair to Taylor to say, bring us all the work, because you're the only guy we know. That is ridiculous. He's an artist, too. He needs us to elevate everything. And I know if he was here, he would say that. But let me give you an example. I, I, I don't say, I say no to a lot of things if I feel like I can't serve the story. It's not about my ego. It's not about what I get out, you know. I got to be able to show up and go, I have value, man. I'm going to show up and I'm going to own it. And I don't care if anybody doesn't like me. I'm not going to treat people bad, but I'm going to I'm going to put it on I'm going to put it on the floor. I got cast in Sicario. It's one scene. You know how many people around the world write to me because of that one scene? Mm -hmm. It is insane. When I auditioned for that film, it was the cop. I was supposed I was reading for the cop, the cop that gets killed in. If you by the way, spoiler alert for a lot of you, right? <laughs> It's been out a few years. It's been out, so sorry. If you're in four words, Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I auditioned for that damn thing. And you know what? Because I thought, okay, he's a cop. It's gray. You know, he's, he's trying to make a living. He's a Mexican cop. He's got his kid. He, he's, he's involved in the drug trade. It's, you know, he's just trying to make, a, make, make ends meet. I was excited about that. And then all of a sudden, I get a call, right, <laughs> from, from the agency. And they're saying, hey, they, they want to cast you. I'm like, oh, thank God. And I'm thinking, how many days I'm going to work? It's a badass movie. And all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, you got Fausto. And I'm like, who the hell is Fausto? <laughs> who the hell is this guy? A day player. It was a day, and yeah. And all I thought, exactly, a freaking day player? Who the hell is he? Well, he's the drug lord. Drug lord? I don't want to be a drug lord. 
I'm sick of that. So, so, so I get the sides, and I get the sides, and I look at it, and what you see on the screen is not what Taylor Sheridan wrote. Now, mind you, he's an exceptional, exceptional writer, so this is not a diss on him. But remember, I know me, and I know how I want to be perceived, and I know what kind of actor I want to be. The scene, and I'll say it right now, the scene is uh, Benicio Del Toro comes into the kitchen. We're not outside on the patio. He grabs a fork and stabs me in my hand. There's a grandmother in the kitchen, and he shoes her away with my kids. And then he points the gun and tells me, should I, should I kill you or her, meaning my wife? And in the script, it shows that I'm looking at him with my eyes going, over here, <laughs> over here. When I read that, I, I almost threw up. I was so disgusted. I thought, another stereo, and it's not Taylor's fault. He, he, those movies have been made. I just didn't want to be a part of that. So what happens? I say no. I say no. This is Denis Villeneuve, right? I've seen his work. The prisoners blew my mind, right? Right, Liz? So I'm saying, no, I can't do this. Because I understand who this Benicio character is. I know what he is, but this is wrong. He didn't even give this man who's with his children the dignity to, to get them out of harm's way. Because we're artists. This is an art form. This isn't some kind of action film that we just splash on with drug lords, right? right. So then, uh, so I talked to Mary and Kim, and they said, well, Joy, I we'll want to talk to you about that, because, <laughs> you know, she's the, casting ca she's the casting director. So she calls me, and she says, hey, I hear you don't want to do the role, but it's a really important role, and they really like you. And I said, yes, but did you read the scene? <laughs> of course she did. I said, look, I I hate to say that, but I can't. And you know why? Those are my convictions, because I'm about to, if I get on set, I'm gonna put it all on the floor again, right? And I'm thinking, okay. She said, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to him, we'll get him to call you, we'll figure it out. I said, okay, got it, okay, I'm not gonna do it. So here's what happens. Uh, a couple of months go by, I'm on vacation with my kids and my family in Colorado. We get a phone call, my son picks it up. And he says, Dad, it's some guy named Denny on the phone. I'm like, Denny, I'm like, hello? Hello, Julio, this is Denny Villeneuve. And I'm like, oh my God, Denny, Denny, how, how are you? How are you? And he begins to tell me that I hear you don't want to be in the film, but we really want to work with you. And I explained to him, I explained to him, I said, look, the whole thrust of your film is about this one man that you've allowed him to be a killer. He's a hired gun. He shows up to the house. That scene doesn't work. I have to be a dad. I don't see myself as a drug lord in that scene. My job is to protect my children. There's none of that there. And he says, that's why we want to work with you. Literally. And I'm not making this up. And then he watched this. And so, so then, so he says, fine, we'll call, we'll get Benicio. We'll, we'll get a conversation going and, and we'll, we'll work it out. I'm like, I was, I was excited. I never got a call from anybody. A couple of weeks go by. Uh, Right, Mary? We you're, book it. Yeah, we book, we book it. it. You're, you're, heading out, you're heading out to New Mexico. So I go out there, and then they give me the script. It's the same scene that I said no to. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, my God. And I'm thinking, now I'm going to have to fight here. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> because I felt like maybe it was a manipulation. But no, here's what happened. They gave us two, they gave us two versions of that scene. And we shot that scene in two days. But there was a lot of back and forth, and there was a little bit of improv here. But it was all, and it was all going through Taylor, too. It wasn't like Taylor didn't know about this. He, he knew about this. In fact, I just saw Roger Deakins mm -hmm. at, at, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have a friend who, who's there, and he gave me a heads up. He goes, hey, man, uh, Roger Deakins is going to be here at the gallery here in Tulsa. He's putting up a show, and it's just him and the gallery owner, and I know him, and I have to shoot some stuff for him. Why don't you come up? I'm like, hell yeah. And I went up, and I spent... A little over two hours with Roger Deakins, and we were laughing about that whole scene. My point is, again, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I have a friend of mine, um, Luke Temple. We would always call each other uh, lunchbox actors. And people would go, what the hell does that mean? I'm like, we clock in and we clock out, man. We show up with our, we do, we do our job, okay? All I'm saying here today is I'm not special. What I'm saying is you can be that actor you want to be if you stick to your convictions, stick to how you feel. The closer you play it to yourself, the more real it's going to be. But you have to own it. You have to own it. But I have a million of these stories. But Mary, when I would, 
I would push. She backed me up every single time. And she would, she would counsel me. She would give me the pros and the cons. We talk over it. These are the relationships that we have as an actor to, a, to an agent. And it isn't some tropey agent actor thing. We, we call each other, we care about each other. Yeah. There's yeah, a human element. Absolutely, and that's interesting you say that because so much of the human element in all of what we do has gone, not just COVID. Part, partly technology, partly COVID. My actors are at home auditioning themselves. No director, no direction, piece of paper, and either their girlfriend, their kid, talking to themselves. We've lost so much of that. That's why this is such an incredible event. I've seen more people tonight than I've seen in three years. Uh, and that's what I could, I tell people, I could never have built my company and been able to represent the quality of people that I do if I hadn't have been able to build relationships. And that's why this is so important. And actors and so many people, once you get on the set, it's great. But the process now is so virtual that we have, we are suffering from what we call audition fatigue. It could be writing fatigue, it could be any kind, where you're sitting in a room by yourself going, is this great? I don't know, what do you think? I think it's great. So we have to really do our best to maintain relationships, the personal part that we have, even though so much of it has gone away. And I think the thing that we hope to impart tonight is we're no different than anybody. We've just kept at it. We've been told no uh, way more often than we've been told yes. Yeah. And we've also said no more times than we probably would say yes. Don't be afraid of that. But it's so important that we are all as talented, as as knowledgeable, as gifted, and as professional as anybody, certainly outside LA, New York. And that, to me, that's, that's gone. Now it's more regional-based, it's more incentive-based, and there are incentives, it is a huge part of it. I mean, we, we just can't kid ourselves. If we don't have them, they're gonna go to where the, the, somebody's you know, dangling more, more kickbacks and more, more tax breaks than we have. And it's important because Texas has so much to offer. We, I always laugh, and I'm a huge personal fan of New Mexico. Um, but, you can't tell, I'm sure. Um, but I laugh because everything's got an adobe. It's in the city codes to have an adobe. They shoot everything there. Texas can be anything. Piney Woods, the mountains, the coast, the, the hill country, the big cities, we've got it all. And we all just have to stick after it and never let anyone treat us like we're from Texas. I, I kind of use it, I kind of use it as a little bit of a, <laughs> I, I, I do have fun with it because a lot of times if I'm talking to someone from LA, I think they think, yeah, look out here, I gotta call this Texas agent, this ought to be fun. <laughs> And, and oftentimes, yes, no, I don't have cows in my backyard. Yes, I used to ride a horse, but I don't anymore. Um, and then you, you nail them with the contract and with the talent, and you present them with the kind of talent we have, and they're just blown away. And it's good for all of us if we, if we all do that. Well, and I think, I think uh, to add on to that, which is so important, is, so here's the thing. I, wanna, I, wanna, I know we're getting it with time, but... I want to give you some, some skills here that you're going to need. When you're in a position of power, when you have even a kernel of information, pass it on to your brother and sister in the, in the film community. Don't hoard that stuff. It doesn't work for anybody. We work with actors, directors, producers all the time. And I, I, yeah, I'd like to connect, but we're actually there doing, a, doing our, our work, right? But I, I, I see actors on sets, and I'm blown away. They're so ta there's so much talent. Uh, young producers, directors, and uh, maybe like Liz. Liz. That's why Liz is so great. I mean, she's had like 10 projects in the last two years. That's insane, right? She's, a hard, she's hard working. But here's the thing. We all help each other. So if I see an actor and I go, hey, do you have an agent? Cause, and it's not me just hoarding around going, you gotta get with our agent. No, if you're, a, if you're an incredible actor and, and you affect me, cause I, I'm a hard ass. I'm like, oh my God, thank God this person was on set. Totally elevated everything we did, totally. My personal responsibility is to go up to that person and ask them. And if they say yes, I'll say, are you happy? And usually they'll say no. 
because nobody's ever happy with their agent except me. <laughs> so, so, so the thing is that I say, all right, you're not, okay. I said, look, I, I'm more than happy to recommend you. Now, I have no leverage other than my word, and my word is respected, but you're going to have to, if you can get it through the door, it's on you. If you get signed, it's because of you and, and what they them, saw. There's one of them here tonight? There's one of them here. There's actually two of them, Aaron and uh, Monica. Oh, Monica, of Yeah, Monica's right here. Monica and Aaron. Both so here. here's the thing. I, I don't, I'm not here to pat myself on the back. Please, please. Not enough people help me. That doesn't mean I shouldn't help others. That's insane. That's ridiculous. Um, if, you see, if you see that in people, you got to go help others. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is people ask me, well, then how do you get so much work? Mary, how many auditions have I had, and how much work have I had? How, uh, balance that out. A, well, a lot more work for you. I, well, here's, no, here, I'll answer. No, 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 it's a good, it's, yeah, a, it's, like, it's a good question. Now he has more work than auditions because we're more selective. Well, we're, well, we're selective, but hang on. It's my relationships with people that have gotten me jobs yeah. that had nothing to do with auditions. Why? Because people, if, if you're likable, they want to work with Referrals you. Referrals from the set, people he's worked with. And then people. relationships. The human oh. element, we said it earlier. By the way, Instagram, some people love it, some people hate it. It's a tool. It is a tool. It's also a tool where you don't make fake stuff, don't make a fake life. That doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> right? Don't, don't yeah. make it meaningful. Make it about something that's special about uniquely about yourself. And by the way, you have to reveal your whole personal life on Instagram, that's ridiculous. But there is something about being authentic, mm -hmm. right? Being authentic. And the job of the actor is to create that aura around them so that you engage others. I have relationships, there are people sitting here today that I have relationships because of Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna point them out because this is fun. <laughs> So I'll start with Merced Elizondo, who's a writer, director. Merced, where are you? Yeah, he's got, he, he, he's working on a film called Morning Of that I'm gonna be a part of again. This is my second project with him. I call him my godson. Okay, he's been winning awards left and right. Now who's gonna help him produce? Liz Cardenas is gonna help him produce. After three tries. After three tries, three, yeah, here we are. But, but Warner Brothers pitched in. Ryan Polly is here. I, I searched out Ryan through Instagram. It was, it was flipped the other way. Ryan Polly with Pizza. I saw Pizza Time, an incredible short. Then I find out that he has a whole production company and he's out of Denton. And I love Denton because I made my first feature film there with George C. Scott, Middleman's Hardware, called Finding the Way Home. Um, Sam. Sam Williamson, who we, we've, we've become, I mean, we've known each other. We've been actors a long time. He's now producing, helping produce work. And anybody that I meet, I share those people with my friends, okay? Ed Lavendera, uh, CNN senior correspondent, national correspondent, he's back there. Hey, Ed. He, and we know each other because of our love for photography. But this is an incredible journalist. Okay, you see what I mean? Um, uh, uh, the, uh, Fernando Cano and his wife, they're, they're a producing team. Uh, he's an AD, she's a producer, they're here. Uh, extraordinary uh, documentary film. My point is, I want to. I connect people all the time because it's my responsibility. It's relationships. I do search people out through Instagram. I'm not stalking people. <laughs> they see that I'm a serious actor, and, and guess what? That all of a sudden starts, starts to turn stalk around. People And people come come at they come at me. <laughs> and, and it's it, it is a tool, ladies and gentlemen. We are no longer limited by our borders and where we are. Okay, we're not. We're just not. And so, you know, not, not to carry on over and over, but it is, it is holding the line in terms of bringing work here, keeping that, that, that bar high, but it's also our jobs as actors to just continue to be savvy, do our work as artists. In the end, it's our work that's gonna speak for us. I'd like to just interject one thing about that because people think this is so glamorous. And I'm sure people think, well, how come they don't think screenwriters are glamorous. Well, of course, I think screenwriting and editing and all the behind the scenes stuff is as important, if not more, than in front of the camera. However, people do think this is such glamour and it is just such hard work. And I think it's why I personally, although I adore production, 
I, I felt like I needed to defend the actor because people think, <laughs> guy walks in the studio, makes 500 bucks and he's out. I'm like, do you know what, he, what he's been through to get there to make $500? Do you have any idea? And that's not even enough. But it's that it, there's so much to the process that we all go through. Yeah, and that, and that, yeah, exactly. And so part of it is, okay, so you get the job. So what? You still got to be good, right? I mean, you, got, you still got to show up. But then what is that moment you turn it into something very special? And that's, and that's letting go of being also an actor. Don't be an actor when you get on set. Don't be a typical actor. You're an artist. Be a human being. I mean, if, if you see someone talking about sports, you like sports, talk about that. Don't talk about... Acting, it's ridiculous. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the time, a lot. Of, look, I'll give you an example. So a, good, a friend of we're friends. No, this is not BS. Juan Turbiartes, right over there, my man over there. We met on Queen of the South. I did five episodes in that show. And there was a horse racing scene we had to do, and they were trying to, they were losing the light, and they were getting, you know, just, they were being not very nice to the whole process. But your job is to get your crap done, right? And I had this, you know, this pages of dialogue I had to do. And Juan was sitting next to me. And I'm like, hey, man, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm an actor. I'm like, cool, man. And then, now I know, by the, by the way, if you're an extra, you are an actor. I mean, you're right there with us, okay? So, so, so he says, I'm an actor. And we start talking, small talking. And then I said, well, no, this is awesome. I said, well, so you do this all the time? He's like, no, I do it on the side. I have my own business. I'm like, what? He says, yeah. Uh, so he has his own landscaping business. Nice big landscaping business. You know what happened to me? I started talking about my drainage issues <laughs> on uh, my drainage issues on my on my on my front yard. I was getting tons of water, and I was talking to him about that. And can you get you can your guys get in there and dig that thing, man? He's like, oh yeah, we'll do. It. And then they go, oh, Julio, you're up. I'm like, okay, hang on, hang on. All right. So I go to the, I hit my mark, and I do my thing, and I come back. I'm like, are you sure, man? Are we gonna be able to do that? And, and then we worked on another episode where he's sitting at a table and he's playing another character. And I come in and I introduce him to, to Veronica Falcon, who's, who was uh, on Queen South. And then he, I said, hey, you got to come over to my house. Well, let's get you, get you out there. He, he fixes my thing and he comes back again another time. I take his headshots in my garage. <laughs> Love that guy. What, I, what, what I'm getting at is that when you're, when you're an actor, you, you, you do all the work before you get to set, and then you're there, and you just, you're just part of the process. Uh, I love this, because I work with Roy on a, the film we did, Deadland, and <laughs> he makes miracles happen. So on ADR, which is you know, some of the audio dialogue replacement, or you also add dialogue. And I'm sitting there with Roy, and, and, the, and they're having me sneak in two more lines where I'm like, where do you fit this in? I don't even move my mouth. He's like, watch this. And so, so I'm, I'm working with Roy, and all of a sudden, yeah. I mean, I learn, I learn all the time. That's the other thing. I learn all the time. I take movie roles mm -hmm. that I'm afraid of. I just did a short. Those are the best kind. Those are the best kind. I did two, two films at the end of the year last year. What was, what was it? Well, anyway, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. There's a shark movie I did. It's in the ocean. It's, it's a prehistoric shark, and I don't know how to swim, and I'm supposed to be underwater in the ocean. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to swim, and the, and the producer goes, it's okay, you're, just, you're gonna be scuba diving. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, we'll just do that. I can do that. <laughs> so we go, to, we go to the Dominican Republic, and I'm thinking they're gonna take me to some special pool, diving pool, where all the elite soldiers go. No, we went to a community pool, or you're like at 12 feet down, and I'm, a, I'm down there with my, my, my tank, my regulator. And I was trained only for three days, and then I got COVID while I was down there. Ten days of isolation. Three days later, they take me out to this special tank, Pinewood Studios. It's a British uh, studios in the Dominican. It's, there are a few around the world. There's, only, I, think, I think, three, three or four. Um, it's also the one that was in the Titanic, right? And so I, I go, I'm super congested. Yeah, I went through 10 days, but I'm still congested. I, I go down to the bottom, it's about 25 feet in the center part of this massive 60,000 square foot tank. It's all painted blue with all these columns, and I'm still congested. The, the second AD director has a thick uh, Dominican accent. He's wearing a mask, because we got protocols, and he goes, 
Ok, Julio, tú sabes lo que está pasando. Vete por la esquina, ok. Yo vete por la esquina y tú estás. Vete por la derecha. Y I'm like, going, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's saying. I also have my regulator going. Now, the reason I say this, I'm not trying to dumb this down, it is funny. You can't think like an actor. Oh my God, no, we're, 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 we are part of the process. So the only thing I could do to get myself under control, because I was starting to panic, is this is the sign when you're diving that it's an emergency. And I did this this many times, and then I went like this this many times. <laughs> and I went, up to the, I went up to the top, and I screamed. I screamed as loud as I could. I don't understand what you're saying, man. And I'm down there at the bottom, and I'm congested. Do you have any storyboards? <laughs> He's like, oh, you should have told me, you know? <laughs> They bring out the storyboards. I'm like, okay, let's do this. You know, we go back down there. And then I was underwater for five hours. I kept go going up to switch my tank. Can I, can I? I wouldn't be an agent if I didn't say it's called the Black Demon. Yeah, and the trailer yeah. released yesterday. Oh, we got 10 minutes. Oh, gosh. We got 10 minutes. We're being told. That's we should right. play the music when we do this. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. Yeah, so my point is through my story, I have a million of them, but can't do them all today. But my point is, again, it's like, Look, we, you get the part, awesome. You still got to do the research. When you get on set, you're part of the team now. You're a player. This has nothing to do with, yes, you have to be safe, without a doubt. Safety is extremely important. I've been shot at, I don't know how many times. I've been killed, I don't know how many times. In the same church, that, uh, that yeah. little chapel where... He was, uh, in, he was in uh, The Harder They, the harder fall, they fall, and he shot a scene in the And they exact kept chapel. shooting me over and over, and nothing happened. Right? Safety is extremely important. But at the end of the day, if you're complaining about your trailer, if you're complaining about the food, if you don't like where you are, you got brought on to set too early, you need to get the F out. You're not on my set, because that's just not the way it works. You're there to be part of the whole process, and guess what? They're going to... You, you may have those lines you memorize. They're going to get rid of those lines and give you new ones. And you may have to improv. Oh, boy. Right? So, in other words, you're there. You, the, the, you've, you've already jumped that hurdle. Now be present and just be part of that process. That's holding the line as a talent. And then we have our, our, our agency, our representatives. In my case, I'm, you know, Mary, who's been guiding me the whole time. Uh, how many times did I call you when I was shooting in Mexico oh, in the God. desert? I thought it was—I couldn't believe it. It I, was an intense. It was. It was intense. It was brutal. I mean, it was. It was almost dangerous. It was. It was brutal. And. But. I wasn't happy. But, but I saw the trailer. <laughs> it's amazing. I, now I'm acting like the actor, right? Yeah. Oh my God, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> you know what else we haven't broached on real quickly is the importance of keeping the work here. Um, I've been on more committees for more years about runaway production and trying to get it back. And it is so imperative because when we don't have the work here, we all have to work. I'm lucky. I'm here. I, my actors can work other places. I prefer that they work in Texas, but I can get him work in other places and he does work other places. But it's important to keep it here. And that's all part of the incentive in the production community and the fact that it, it is so huge because if we start losing crew, and, and talent, it, everybody loses. And it's just really, and it's such an incredible community. And I truly say this all the time, and my people in Dallas laugh at me. I always say, Fort Worth is where it's happening for film. And Fort Worth is bringing us back. And I couldn't be more proud. Well, well Fort Worth is so versatile because, I mean, there, there are places. I mean, think about how, yes, yes, we can get to those beautiful fields and, you know, the ranches. But... Man, have you been driving through Fort Worth? There's, we are also an urban community. Yeah. We're also a big city. We have uh, the diversity of, of our cultures here, okay? Uh, I'm, I, was, I came here from, from Mexico when I was about five years old. I grew up in Diamond Hill, Fort Worth. I grew up there. I graduated uh, from high school at Dunbar High School, stop six. I went, I went there from eighth grade to 12th grade. Someone Watching television. I, my, no, seriously, when, I, when we, were, we came from Mexico, uh, we were living in a little mobile home in Thai, Texas, and my mother would sit me in front of the TV, not because you know, she was lazy, she had other kids, we had my siblings, 
And I would sit there and watch the old black and white movies, and I would watch Jimmy Stewart. And, I th and then later, I, I was also getting into like Christopher Walken, which, by the way, when I did Cowboys and Aliens, I would do like a Christopher Walken. And then Sam and I do the thing where I go, so you're going down fast, <laughs> man, right? So, but I was phonetically losing my accent. Well, not losing, I was, phonetically, I was learning how to speak English by mimicking actors on, on, on TV, right? But you distracted me. What, what so was that? What was the thing? What was you I were saying? talking yeah. about the community. Oh, yeah. The, okay, now I'm... Oh, yes. So the thing is... <laughs> bring it back to what, what we're here for. Um, but, I, but I graduated from Stop 6. Um, again, there's a you know, beautiful black culture, beautiful Asian culture, beautiful Latino culture, beautiful Caucasian culture. I mean, the thing is, Fort Worth... And this is always tell people, I don't... You know, you could watch the news all day, but... People actually do get along, you know. We, you know, we do get along, and we're not all, you know, we're not all one flavor. But that's what this is about. But Fort Worth has so much to offer that, yeah, we want we want stuff to happen here. It, 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 you know, it's a, it's it's a special place. The 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 living, right? The the quality of living. But at the end of the day, you know, we're we're here because we love movies. We love here because we love that, right? So that's what we want to... I remember there was a casting director one time when I said, how come we don't have enough Latino actors? Like, we don't, it just seems like we, we don't have enough of them. And I would tell him, you go, 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 go to Oak Cliff, go to Fort Worth. I, mean, I can point out all these other areas. And I won't name him because I'll embarrass him, but he is a man, and he left off to go become an actor himself in L.A. and came back again as a casting director. And he said... No, I don't get paid for that. And that's when I realized, wow. That's, and, he, and you know what? It's not a diss on him. He was right. But the sad part is, this is why you need to do the work. You need to be with people who nurture you. You got to be with people who, to push you and challenge you. And don't settle for the pats on the back. Challenge yourself. Be with people who are doers, makers. Uh, as I sit here, uh, I'm blown away. I didn't even know this place was here. Yeah. Blows my mind. It's incredible. So here's another space I'm going to explore now, you know. My, my thing is that, you know, there's so much of that around. There's still parts of Fort Worth, um, people in the business, I don't know, because I spent most of my time away trying to get the work. Right. But I want to be home. I want to be able to spend months at a time in my house. I spent, I counted last year, four and a half months away from my house last year. That's hard on me, hard on my family. But I love what I'm doing. But boy, what I'd love to do a series here and oh, just God. stay here, yeah, right? Standing. Yeah. You know, I'm so excited. I've had people on Bass Reeves. We had people on 1883. I mean, I want, them, I want all of them, and I, but I respect the other states' incentives. But it's just so exciting to have work back here, quality work. And I've actually had, I, I, this is entertaining. I've had a couple of actors lately go, it's such a small part. I said, look at the show, look at the writer, look at the state, and, and reconsider that decision. Think about what you're turning down and what opportunity someone else is going to have when you want to do that. Because we are, in a sense, rebuilding. And it's important to, to you can't take everything and no one should. And I'm, I'm as picky as anybody. But there's a lot out there for us to, yeah. to have. Well, you know, I know we're running out of time, but so we're going to do some, some questions and answers. So if anybody... Ha Ask us anything, anything. Yes. No, I've been asked to do that for so long, and I have not. I have branched out here and there, and I'm so quality conscious, and my business model is so much for actors. I'm not saying no. I never say no for possibilities, because you do have to evolve. And I've tried really hard to adapt. But it's a great question. And the, one of the things I get asked more than anything is for uh, writers, literary agent. There's not many people around that do that. And there really needs to be more representation. We don't have as good of an infrastructure for representation for other segments of the industry in this, in this market, like, or in the state, really. Yes, in the back. Training, training, yeah, 
uh, training is the best because, as I said earlier, and I wasn't being disrespectful, but everybody sits on their couch and binges a show and goes, I want to do that. <laughs> everybody does. And sure, I would too. Um, but there is so much involved. And the thing that amazes me is the amount of people that approach me that have done this much research. Don't know a thing about me. I get more requests for children, actors, than anything. I've never represented a child, except for Liz. Well, you have, you have a but, website. But you, you, I have a website. You have a website People that don't spells go to it the out. website. We all spell it out. We all, we, our priority is with our existing clients, but we can't grow without new ones. With my agency, we require any kind of industry referral. Coach, producer, actor, um, like we said, we have two people in here tonight that Julio recommended. Well, there's Jake. That doesn't you just mean, signed but, Jake. Yeah. You just did Chocolate Lizards. Right, exactly. And that doesn't mean that it's an immediate in, but it does mean you're going to be seen because of the amount of people that we just get daily from not... People, people will just... All I get are shots in people's bathrooms. That's all I get. <laughs> Pictures in the bathrooms. I know what everybody's bathroom looks like. <laughs> That doesn't help. On the, on the contrary, I don't need you to go out and spend $1,000 on headshots. Do your homework. Do your research. And don't spend money to get an agent. Absolutely. We used to have a state law. I helped put it in in 1991. It got rolled out with some bill. But the worst thing is a scam artist that is not regulated because we have no state license. Do not pay a penny to sign with an agent. A le legitimate agent only makes a commission. They only make money when their clients work. Uh, yeah, in the back. That's a good, great question. Uh, how, you know, that's a good question. I, I think it happened probably, you know, it happened, <laughs> I know this is going to sound horrible, after Walker took his ranger. <laughs> 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 because here, here's the thing. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm, I'm a Mexican man. And uh, very Mexican, and uh, yeah, they ca they they'll they'll put me into gang. Remember this ga always gang gang roles. He's always a gangster. Uh, I'm always I was lords, a peasant. I was I mean I had lines and I it was all the pretty horses. At least they're good movies. Um, and there was a point where I was like, I remember working on Walker Texas Ranger, and I had to play this reformed gang member, and I'm in love with this this white girl, and then. Drive-by happens, they shoot me, I'm in the hospital most of the time, and anyway, and I remember I was telling the director, who was a lovely man, I said, man, I just want to come out and say, orale, and I want to do the, you know, whatever, whatever. He's like, no, no, just stick to, you know, what's on the page. And I was like, yeah, but that's, no, just stick, there's someone in the Midwest going to watch this, they have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, what am I doing here, right? Because my point is that at that point, I said yes, thinking I was going to be able to be a participant. The, the time that I say no is when I know I'm not of service. Remember, by the way, this is a service industry, and this is something people forget. And I, and I, I know I'm making it sound, I'm reducing it, but it is. We're here to serve the story. Okay, it's not about our ego. But if I'm here to serve the, serve the story, then I have the space to say because of who I am, where I'm from, what I do, you brought me here. You saw something. I have something to offer. But the minute in the process of, of being offered the audition, or maybe they, they want to talk to me about a, a role, if I can pick up on the fact that they have no, they have no uh, concern for me in that respect, I'm like, no. Or, you know what I mean? That's when I, that's when I realized, no, I was, I was just happy to be in. And that's when that thing turned. Now, I pick on Walker, Texas, because it wasn't just me. There's a cowboy going, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't talk like that all the time, you know? You know, <laughs> my point is, we all went through it, whether you were playing a certain uh, role on Walker. And, and by the way, not to diss Walker, we, we all worked. But we, we've advanced since then. And for me, it was more about that. I and mean, it, was, it was the three burials when, when I said yes to that. But... It's, it's a constant thing. I'm, I'm, we're always talking about when do I say no, when do I say yes. It's, there's too many parameters, well, you know? Parameter. I guess this is one. The one parameter I think is important in saying no is what's your value? I mean, what are you worth? And what happened for me as an agent after COVID was during COVID, jokingly, everybody became an actor. 
There's every kind of website. You can go online and book an actor for five bucks. Voiceover guy, five bucks. I don't do that. And I thought there's a possibility when I came out of COVID that that would be what happened, that the pricing structure would have so many people out there, so many people available, that quality didn't matter anymore. And it still does. I had my best year I've ever had in 39 years last year. And it's only because, thank you, but it's because of people, it's because of my clients, number one, the quality of my clients, but it's also because we held a line. We were flexible, but we didn't want to give up and give in. You have to do certain things to get to that point. But at some point, you should feel your value is okay to say no or to adjust your rates accordingly. And, and you know, everything has to be adjusted. But I think it's consider your value is what I do a lot. And then one last thing, because I know we're, we we got to get going. We're, we're on a time schedule here. Um, and, and add on to that is, is also how do you want to be perceived? Also remember that I hate using the word brand. That's a very important thing to understand. I have a friend here, Cesar Sanchez, who was a, I worked with him way back when. He, by the way, he designed the logo for Artes de la Rosa. I don't know if you guys know that. Cesar Sanchez is here with Imaginary Creative, a good friend of mine. Um, you're, you're a brand, so how do you want to be perceived? We talk about this, right? So if you want to be perceived a certain way, then why, you know, then you want to play an attorney, why, why do you have this big bushy beard, right? Shave it. And my, my point is, how do you want to be perceived? The no for me is always about the quality of work. I want to keep building on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Because as you begin to build on the quality of work and the people you work with, all of a sudden people don't think you're from here, which is odd, right? It's always odd when they go, oh, I thought you were from some, you know, LA or whatever. It's, it's, it's just, uh, it's sad, but that's just the reality. But it's always about how do I want to be perceived and then, and then, and then add to that perception. You're not lying. Again, it's, it's a tricky thing. You're walking the, the line. My thing, like on my, on my Instagram, it, it's, I've, it's evolved and I'm at the point now where it's, I'm like, I'm good because I don't take pictures of my food. Um, no offense to anyone with their dogs or their cats, but if I'm an actor and I want to be perceived as badass mofo, you know, badass Mexican man, and I'm here with a pet lizard, maybe the lizard, but maybe not the cat. My point is that it's a perception. And the, and the reason I say that is because that used to always exist before Instagram. Instagram is a thing. But look, I'll just go back to Tommy Lee Jones. I, and I say this because he taught me so much. I worked on a film called The Three Burials of Melquiades Estrada. And when I, would, and when I lived with him, I lived with him for a month before we started shooting, when pe production people started to show up, some of them were nervous to meet him because his reputation preceded him because he demanded so much from everybody. But he never did anything. He, he's the sweetest, kindest man in the world. But yet, He's a perception that he's this badass, ornery guy who can't, you know, whatever. It's not true. Part of it is he's a, he's, a, he's a public person. He has to protect himself. But he always allowed his, his, the perception of who he is was always ahead of him. And when people met him, it was, he didn't have to do all the work. It's the same thing with me on Instagram and the, the things that I do that we should all be doing. It's like, how do you want to be perceived? If you're a high-end production company, well, show it. Show your best work. Uh, now, could, could there be moments where you can pull the curtain behind and show the magic? Yeah, I think that's important too, because you also don't want to make it seem like it just happened. It's a lot of work. So the no plays into a lot of that too, right? Uh, and the yeses. But I know we're out of time and uh, respectfully have to stop here, but we really appreciate everybody who came out. Uh, some of us are probably going to hang out in the parking lot, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> And I'm gonna go grab a beer somewhere else. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you all for coming, and thank you, Mary. Thank you, Taylor, for having us. Uh, to my crew who came out so far and uh, supported us. Thank you, all of you, for, for being here. So, thank you so much.